Hello and welcome to this new video in the Python programming playlist. In this video, we continue with the further operations that we can do on the string. In the last video, we have seen few of them. So in this video as well, we'll see multiple operations or different different things that we can do on a string. So let's create a variable. I've taken a new notebook. So I say mystr is equal to, let's say I write any few alphabets like this. A, B, C, D, A. You could write in any sequence. That doesn't matter. This way. And run this. So, the first thing that we want to see is uh, not necessarily there should be spaces. You can write them continuously as well. Here, what we are trying to find is the position of an item or, a, or rather the character rather than the item. So, let's say to start with, I want to know the position of A where it comes. So I can say the variable name mystr dot use find and in this pass what you want to search. So let's say a. So this is zero. Remember the indexing starts from zero even in a string. This is a string. This is not a list. Okay, because you, we have not used the list constructor. So if you don't know what the list constructor is, uh, you can either explicitly specify list or use square brackets. So that's how you differentiate between the list and a normal string. So, 0. Let me take a different word. I'll copy this. Let me take a word as uh, a character as C. So, now I see C is at the fourth position. How? So, this was the first. 0, 1, which is the space. 2 is B, 3 is space, and then 4 is C. We would also want to see is this case sensitive? Let me paste this and write capital A. So here, what it has done is it has returned us minus one. So minus one, what is minus one? Let's understand if I also try to give any other character, let's say Z, here you're getting minus one. So understand when you get minus one it doesn't mean the minus one index because if you remember we should not get confused with the index what we've seen in the last video if i say my str in square brackets minus one it means it will give me the right hand the right most character so minus one over here denotes is it was not able to find either the capital a or even a smaller z over there so minus one in this case means that that particular character is not Found. So remember that. Now moving on further, how you can also do this is you can also store this position in a variable. I say loc, short form for location maybe, or any other word you want to use, that's fine. This is a variable and try to print lock, you will get zero, and which you can reuse this variable at a later stage instead of again finding it in this way. There is also another way I say loc2 or log2 is equal to mystr dot index, which does the same thing. So let's say if I say c and then try to call loc2, same output. So two different ways of finding the positions. Another thing that we want to do is by default, what happens index or find they start from the left hand side. That's how they are designed. But sometimes you would want to also see from the right hand side. So let's say if I come over here, I want to see what is the first first most position of the alphabet or character A from the right hand side. If I say mystr.find or index, it will always search from the left hand side. So just like we had R strip, we also have R find over here. So I can say mystr dot r find a. So it will start looking for a from the right hand side, but the position what will be, it will return is 60. So the difference is find will start from the right left hand side and r find will start from the right hand side. So right hand side the first position where it got was a. You can count this. So I can say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 
So this is the 16th. This way. And similarly, what you can do is you could say my str dot r index use a or any other same answer. So this is just to get started how you can find the position of a character either from the left or from the right hand side. Left is default but for right just prefix r like r pine and r index. The next thing uh, is about a specific to case conversion. So let's say I take a variable mystr2 is equal to and I say hello world. Print this just by calling it or by the print command and I want to convert this to uppercase. So simply I can say mystr2 dot, mystr dot upper and store this in a different variable. Let's say mystr3 is equal to this and print or call the mystr3 variable. So very simple upper and now I'll just copy this come down paste let us take the my str3 which is an upper and convert it to simply lower by using lower just we'll change the variable to 4 instead in this way so very simple now uh, the beauty about python is again as i've explained earlier it has given you a lot of uh, good things and also diversified you know a number of operations that you can do on across you know uh, things which are available be it variables loops or anything so we are going to see all of them and see how detailed this would be further in the playlist let's say just let's consider these simple things we converted it to upper and to lower we can also find out whether a string is completely in upper case or lower case or not so for example i can say my str3 now, if you recall, mystr3 is completely uppercase. So, I can say mystr3 dot and use all the is functions, control space. All of this will return true or false. So, is upper, run this, you will get true. But if you test opposite, say is lower, this will return false because it was completely upper. Similarly, you could test for the mystr4 as well which was lower so this is nice this was scenario pertaining to case conversion the next scenario that we want to see is let's say you have any variable abc anything and it contains some characters so you want to see are those characters uh, contain are those alphabets or numbers or not so to start with i say x is equal to hello and then i can say x dot is control space now before we see that remember all these is functions will return you true or false based on what you're using currently we'll go with the first one which is is alpha and brackets so what this will return me is if the x variable contains only alphabets from a to z nothing else from that it will return you true in case if it contains anything apart from those characters from a to z let's see what happens so if i say 8 and just use a different variable this will return me false because it is containing a number what in case of space let me give a space over here it will still return you false also we can test special characters like at the rate this will still return me false so it should purely contain only alphabets from a to z only then it will return you true else false this is helpful in case you want to test the alphabets Similarly, moving on, there is one more thing. If I take z is equal to, let's say, hello, 7, and there is another function, is lnum, which means, is it alphanumeric? So, similarly, it will give me true because it contains both alphabets as well as numbers. Another scenario, let's say, I say my str is equal to, just store some numbers in it and then I say my str dot is just to start with is alpha this will return me false because everything there was in numbers so instead of what I will use over here is is I can say numeric 
does this contains all numbers yes it does so in this way similarly for number specific if i copy this you have is like you have decimal as well which you can uh, try and explore other things the next one is uh, a specific scenario let's say i have a variable to say my string is equal to and you can write anything i love python and let's call this my string this way now what i want to do is i want to enclose this python into double quotes or single quote whatever so if i write this way it does work in this fashion single quotes let's try for double quotes if i do this way sorry there was an extra double quote there so don't get confused the start double quote at the beginning at the end is double quote for the string and what i want is i'm just trying to put these double quotes around python to see to print them as literal as it is so here it will throw an invalid syntax error so in case you want double quotes what you can do you put a slash over here and then you can put a slash over here and run this so it will get printed so this is just the way how you would print those double quotes for single quotes you could get them ready for double quotes you could try out this hack so that's it in this video keeping this uh, until here only there are a few more operations that we will look in the next part part 3 of the basic operations on string in the another video thanks for watching and stay tuned